Okay, Lynn, this is a, comes back to a question of infrastructure. And the question is this. Um, Lynn, obviously when we look at the entire map of the United States, uh, there are a whole series of immediate needs that present themselves. Obviously, the energy grid as a whole is a disaster, uh, and, and there's no question uh, that we have to address overall questions of transportation. Even President Obama uh, has come to favor the idea of high-speed rails, but certainly for anybody who has who's been forced to travel up and down the East Coast corridor, uh, there is no question that this would represent uh, an improvement in the quality of life of a very significant portion of the U.S. population. It's also clear that such projects produce jobs. Uh, those jobs can be looked at as being uh, productive jobs. Uh, and that's, you know, that's all well and good. But then, uh, if we take a look at what you've proposed uh, as the NAWAPA project, the criterion seemed to change somewhat because certainly uh, Nawapa fills a critical need in terms of the delivery of fresh water. Uh, it also, without question, would provide an awful lot of jobs. But it is also the case that the more one looks at the overall implications of, of NAWAPA, uh, ranging from the, the role of, of chlorophyll uh, to, to various other discrete things that could be brought up. The fact is that when you talk about a project like that, what you're actually talking about is not only providing jobs uh, and, and filling a need, but what you, what you really are doing, essentially, is you're, you, at least potentially, uh, you're changing the nature of the planet. Uh, and that is, you know, it took a while for that to hit us as an idea. But then when it did, uh, it, it, made, it made the whole project uh, take on new dimensions. And, and certainly, anything else that we were considering in terms of energy production, in terms of high-speed rail, uh, and things that, that were really nifty uh, in our planning phase seem to kind of pale in comparison. So the question is, is, is how does one proceed? I mean, do we, do we therefore say that we have uh, limited capabilities and therefore unless something really changes every aspect of, of the, uh, the atmosphere of the earth that we don't pursue it? Uh, I mean, does this, I, I guess what I'm really asking is does this become the criteria for whether or not we call something infrastructure or whether we just consider it a fix for something that's broken. Well, I would say why I've used the term platforms is precisely this reason. Don't try to make this categorical distinction of infrastructure as something which is not productive. We'll just treat it as a, as a platform, as a, as a system of organization, which is universal, more or less universal, which you're operating within. And look at the uh, environment, which you're creating a new kind of physical space-time. That's all. And so now you define what range of this, and you find that there are discrete levels in which there are breaking points. I mean, the, the typical breaking point is, look, you can Im just imagine the discovery that was made by mankind of transoceanic navigation. What's that say? What does Einstein say about that huh? later? Huh? That the universe is finite that the star system is finite. 
Otherwise, how can you have this kind of thing functioning? How can you navigate? When you say, for example, take, take the changes, the cycle of changes, which is in the range of 1,800 years or so, in terms of the North Magnetic Pole, Take all the other changes that occur within the framework of this system, the astronomical system. Do you realize that Einstein, when he commented on Kepler's discovery of gravitation, huh, said the universe is finite huh, but not bounded? Well, what's the star system? We're talking about the same thing. So the ancient mariners had, in a sense, come upon the same phenomenon indicating a similar kind of conclusion, that the star system is somehow involves a finite system with internal laws of behavior associated with it. So that, I think, is the way you have to look at this. So we go through different states. You look at the, look at the stellar array. What's the universe doing? It's going through different states, huh? it's different states of existence. You get all this, what are these astronomers do, doing after all? What are we doing with all these kinds of things of, you know, instrumentation? Of, it's just exactly that. And so what you have in, in any uh, particular system, you have a system which corresponds to a state of the system. That's the way we deal with it. Hmm? I say we should look at this, and we are going to be looking at this more and more, through the idea of cosmic radiation have universality of cosmic radiation. Cosmic radiation, which is distinguished not by particles, but by singularities within the system. And look at it from that standpoint. Just keep an open mind. Because that's, this, the universe is, is an evolving universe. It's developing. We are some part of it. We are some important part of this thing. Do we know the answer? Of course not. So what? That's half the fun. And find, find the next answer. And what we should do, essentially, looking at the NOAPA project with this, in these terms, what we're doing now, which is, uh, makes me very happy, uh, is we're looking at, at, at the system. And what are we going to get out of this? We're going to get out of all these engineers and scientists and so forth who are crucial factors inside the system of the, of the development of NOAPA. NOAPA is going to become a new university in practice because of all the kinds of activities which we know now are implicit in that, in that work. So you're going to, we're going to take a whole generation of young people and older people too, and they're going to, in fact, have a virtual new university, which is based on the implications of this. This is huge. Nawapa implications are already huge. Well, look, we're talking about the Arctic area. The Arctic area is a whole area of study. It's never been really cracked. A lot is known about it, but it's never been cracked. We're talking about, we're talking about Siberia. It also has lots of unknowns under the permafrost problem, huh? so forth. So we, the point is that you have people who are actively involved in these kinds of projects, which NOAPA is. It's a change of state in, 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 in the system you're operating in. What are you going to do? Well, you're going to have the activity we call university laboratory activity. Because you're going to have as a natural part of the process the investigation of what this all means and what we're experimenting with. We're going to, we're going to look at this in terms of, the, of how does the sun allow this thing that call Earth with our people on it come into being. We're going to try to change some of this so naturally, we're going to have to ask some questions about what we do before we do it. What is that? That means that you're going to take a whole lot of people who are interested in this, and they're going to go through a new, whole new layer of subject matter in education. And you're going to find that the activity of the NAWAPA itself becomes a generator of universe. Of universe. Huh? It becomes a, and also of universities. It means that the exchanges down between Russia in their t t territory and the U.S., the problems in China, the same thing, all become part of this great study we're going to do. 
which is provoked upon us because we're meddling with things that we ha man mankind has not meddled with before. And if you're going to do that, you're going to be serious about it and responsible. So you're going to have the activity assembled to assess from time to time, what the hell are we doing here? What are we, what are we doing? What, what are the implications of what we're doing? What are we discovering that we didn't know before? What's that? That's the ideal university. Just to get, and so the, the project itself will become a kind of university. It'll become a determinant of what the exchange papers are written about, that sort of thing. And I say the future is obvious to us. We've been discussing this a good deal. It's obvious we've got to think, take the periodic table, redefine it, not throw it out, but redefine it from the standpoint of not assuming particles, but assuming singularities in, in a system of cosmic radiation. For example, cancer research, big problem, important. Hmm? All kinds of areas. Let's go at cosmic research. We were, we're gambling with, with uh, treatments for cancers. So why don't we just raise it up a notch? Let's look at cosmic radiation generally. Let's get some evidence in on cosmic radiation. Let's, instead of trying to find the thing that works, why not try to find a systematic answer as to how we should define how it works? And a project like Numapa is the natural generator of a new platform of conception of man on Earth in all kinds of respects. And my view, my term for this is fun. <laughs> I mean, this kind of exploration to me, under this kind of condition, is what I've always considered fun. Is my old, probably as a result of being a, a hard-boiled management consultant for a while. <laughs> Just that, that I think that way. Tr treat problems, enjoy problems because they can be fun. Finding the answers, finding the solution. We're getting stuck with the same old rut all the time is not fun. It's boring. And I think people would live longer if they had more fun in this type. Mm -hmm. uh, the other, some of the other types we might do without. 